Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we're talking to the Picassos. Check it out. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Fret Rescue. Located in Southeast Michigan, Joe at Fret Rescue has over 17 years of experience as a journeyman luthier. From basic setup to major repairs and restorations, you can put your trust in Fret Rescue. Contact Fret Rescue via email at fretrescue at gmail.com. You can also find them on social media by searching for Fret Rescue. At sign F E R T R E S C U E. That's Fret Rescue. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I'm talking to Torin, Dan, Charles, and Joe from the Picassos. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We also have uh, a couple of fans. We've got Lauren and Shelby. How you guys? All right. Awesome. Well, I think you guys were um, kind enough. Well, actually, you were kind enough um, to reach out via Messenger. Uh, sent me, you know, saying that you thought the podcast was cool and uh, were kind enough to give me the download codes to your album and I was on there on Bandcamp checking it out and I was uh, I just thought hell yes yeah we, we should have you guys on the fans of bands because I was I was very intrigued by the music because it's something that I've not listened to a lot personally but I felt like the music was like just so original and so um, I, I, I want to say nuanced and textured because all the different songs you've got different feelings through all of them there's a kind of haunted dreamlike quality that i really liked it kind of reminded me and i don't know if you guys have listened to the doves um but some of their music has that kind of like very atmospheric and you know not necessarily um dark but it's kind of i, I don't know it's hard to describe and that's how i felt like your music was just very intriguing uh, super interesting, and I thought, you know, hell yes, we should talk. So thank you guys so much for being on Fans of Bands. Well, thanks for having us. Of course. So how did the band come together? How did you guys get started? Well, um, it kind of started as a solo project of sorts. Um, I myself... I had to cobble together a suitcase and a tambourine as my backup percussion and would just kind of do acoustic performances wherever I could. Um, that kind of prolonged for a year or so. Um, and then at some fateful event, um, I met up with Torin, and that's really when things started kind of rolling forward. Um, Dan and I have known each other for many years. Uh, we go back in various other projects, of course. Um, but when I knew we had a solid foundation with Torin and Dan, that's really when the Picassos became what, what close to what it is today. And then finally, two years ago, roughly, uh, we added Joan at the mix for keyboard support. And that was um, really, I think, when you're going to get the well, everything you hear on the record is everything that the four of us have been able to put together um, uh, and bring all those influences in. So, uh, short bit of our history <laughs> awesome so uh, uh yeah i'm curious where, where what was the inspiration for the name well um it, it's funny because i was performing under the picassos as a solo artist for some time and the the inspir the intention was always to create a band have people to back me up and be a group unit and it kind of just started evolving over time uh, to mean various things. Um, but ultimately, I like to think of it as a dead artist more than anything else. Um, and explicitly how they often do not get much recognition until after they die. Wow. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, I'm wondering, like, what was it about Picasso in particular? Not a lot, to be fair. <laughs> I, it's it's not. It wasn't the blue period. <laughs> in, it really, it, to, to to be to be sure, like I appreciate the painter, 
I appreciate the work and the history, but it is less a tribute to the man or his art and more of just the namesake and what that could invoke yeah. and of an ever changing kind of a ambiguous, uh, implacable thing uh, was really the ultimate inspiration. Excellent. Uh, I like it. I think it's, uh, uh, it's uh, again, like, just like your music in a way, intriguing. You know, you're like, what, why? You know, what, what is that? The jury's out. <laughs> some like it, some. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it, I think it works good. So if you, you know, uh, for people that have not heard your music before, how would you describe your music to them? And, and this is a question for all of you. Like what, when you, someone says, you know, Hey, you know, what do you do? Um, as far as like music and, um, they've not heard you before and you say, Oh, I'm in the band, the Picasso's. And they say, well, what kind of music is that? What, what do you tell them? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bad judge of this. So I, <laughs> Charles, oh, never, Charles doesn't tell people he's in bands. So <laughs> <laughs> they do by looking at him. I mean, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I mean, personally, I think I just, I've always described this as like a, I, I've used cemetery folk quite a bit or, or funeral folk. Um, just like it's dead, but very, very lively still. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah, just like, like I, I bring Where's people to the Spooky Rock coffee shop located inside of, I uh, <laughs> missed the last the message, but. <laughs> oh, it says, yeah. Uh... Spooky Rock Coffee Shop located inside a funeral parlor. That's awesome. There, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's fair. That sounds inviting. Uh, oh, Sorry, man. Dan, you were saying? No, I, 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 no nothing really more there. Um, yeah, just, just a, a good like I I I boil it down to just calling us a rock band so that people will give us a chance. Yeah, because when yeah. you mention when you mention you're a goth band, people are like. Okay, but like you guys were like the eyeliner and all that. It's like, yeah, sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it, 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 you know, even the term goth is very like broad. I mean, yeah. there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that can go in there. And it can be, you know, to someone's liking that likes the cure or somebody that may not like the cure, but likes, um, can't even think of another goth band, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a very, big broad term but so is rock you know um yeah. but I, I i definitely yeah. like the um spooky rock coffee shop <laughs> that's that, a good that's yeah that's, <laughs> I, that's, that's very when, good when i when i talk to people about the kind of music that we make um so i i do kind of use the umbrella of like oh you know like like goth rock sort of thing you know mm -hmm. i i sort of I think one phrase that has been used is uh, cemetery punk and i think maybe dan used it already i can't i can't remember exactly what it's a cemetery said. folk but it's cemetery yeah. folk yeah, yeah. So yeah. cemetery punk and then the, the funniest description of our music that i think i've heard so far is scooby-doo chase me which <laughs> <laughs> who said that luke i always wow. that that's fine <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know it's like because you got i guess you know we, you got some of like the the faster punk stuff you got more of the folky tunes and then you got some some more of the the fun upbeat stuff kind of like uh, weird sisters on divination scars or there's another song that uh, on one of our other eps and other scary stories uh x ray specs that's pretty popular so it's very much like i don't know fast that's... dancey sort of stuff so, so we, we kind of dabble in that a little bit too yeah, yeah. We, yeah we it's, have it's very varied <laughs> yeah yes because there's also some, walk... some tunes on there that are kind of like almost um roots rock kind of like very um i it made me think of like steampunk, um, but I don't just because I associate that music with steampunk. But um, and I'm blanking on the name of the tune. I'd have to go look on uh, uh, Bandcamp. It's like toward the middle of your of the the list, and it's kind of like an old timey kind of sounding. I think uh, you're uh, talking I'm... serious business. Oh yes, serious business. Yes, has mm -hmm. kind of an old timey. Yep. Yes, it inspired a little bit by like show tunes, yeah. um, that kind of storytelling aspect to it. But that one uh, is no surprise, is, is a, a largely influenced by the likes of like Tom Waits or yeah. I guess a Leonard at that point. Yeah. Um, but just to kind of tap into 
the vagaries of it, but also um, give you a story, take you by the hand, and this is kind of what it is. Um, and it's inspired by uh, true life events in my the death care industry. Wow. So awesome. there is that. That's it. Very cool. So the debut album that you guys put out, I think it was May of last year, Divination Scars. Yeah. Um, curious what, for each of you, what is your favorite track or tracks on the album and, and why? Uh, oh, mine is Wicker Casket. I just think it's, I think it's such a good holistic representation of us and not just our sound, but our theme. Because it's a, it's a song that's very explicitly about mourning and about, um, about coping with loss of a loved one. Um, and, and dying itself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but it, um, but I, I also, I just, I love the, I'm very proud of the instrumentation on it. Um, I think the the arrangement just comes just came together really well on that. Uh, I think the mix came together really well on it, and I think it just it walks a really nice line between of like of having like some catchy hooks in it, but having a lot of depth at the same time. Cool, awesome. Who wants to go next? Uh... Um, I, oh, no, go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm stuck between two. It's like, because it's like, I, I really like, um, Thousand Eyes, Restrict, the yeah. song that we, we released as a single, I believe, in April before we actually, before we released it. Um, uh, so, so that one's a lot of fun. And to, to me, it's just very ethereal, very atmospheric. And it, it, it's like, I, I don't know, it's like kind of like, what you're mentioning earlier it's like it almost feels like this haunted spooky sort of dream a yeah. little bit um um i also like um it's towards the end of the album and it's not one that's you know very much in our live rotation that much but slaughtered lamb is one that i really really enjoy yeah that and was it, very it kind cool of uh, it i don't know it, it's like it, it's 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 like i don't know i i like songs like i'm, I'm a big like 70s rock guy i love songs that just have like like you can just it just it's just a jam to me you know it's like it's yeah i don't know lots, lots of cool instrumental stuff happening there so awesome uh dan and charles which, who wants to go next um i'd have to say uh i agree with both torn and joe um those are great songs and i think wicker like like torn said is a great encapsulation of absolutely everything we've done and do um and and thousand is like one of my favorites to play live I, you can just really get lost in that groove yeah uh, once you're locked in um but i think on the album i think i think still one of my favorites um is go dark um it's a, it's surprisingly poppy which is always very fun um but like it's just it's just it's a good groove i just it's one i just really enjoyed um recording playing and, and doing all that Nice. Charles, how about you? Yeah, it, it oh. changes all the time, to be fair. And we've kind of had we've had the time now to really kind of live with the record and live with the songs and the iterations and they, they continue to evolve and grow a little bit. Um, but I think one that really is a great encapsulation of what I had in my head um was uh, Leather Wings of Blood is a Life is my vampire ballad that I always had in my head. And I think that's remarkably uh came together rather well uh it features our our friend gerard from second salem in fact so that was a a coup to have all the pieces fit together and find oh what the fuck oh, hold on hold oh, on here okay uh, you got Maybe. some spam uh, friend yeah we got some spam oh, i guess on. we do great all right. All um right. I get to <laughs> sorry <up>. about that <laughs> Does that happen often for you? <laughs> yeah, you know, every once in a while, because it's you know the Zoom's open. I don't really know who right. the fans are. Um, right. Yeah, uh, that's well, the first well, time we had some like that. But uh, if he's a fan, he can fuck right the hell off. So. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for real. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 
trying Sorry about to. That, guys. <laughs> oh, you're right. He is trying to. Never mind. He can stop fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, yes. All right. Uh, so where were we? <laughs> yeah, I think Charles oh. was talking about Leatherwing. Yeah. Uh, I was, but I don't know if I want to continue that thought. All right. <laughs> right. Uh, I might bring him back. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was going to say that uh, I, maybe it was Torn that mentioned the the mix. And I was, you know, I, the my favorite track on there was Thousand Eyes. And I thought the mix was so good on that tune. Something about the way the, and I really love the sound of the snare. It's actually, Thank on the you. whole album, the the drums, super cool. The snare Thank sounds you. awesome. Um, I also like the also the thick fuzz on <laughs> on that uh, on the guitars itself, and um, there's just something uh, like an insistence to that song. And there's a few other tunes that have that kind of the beat. Um, I think Dan, you were mentioned the groove of of Thousand Eyes was something that you you can mm -hmm. get into yourself. Um, mm -hmm. but there's a few tunes that like that have a very insistent beat that kind of just pulls you in. And then, you know, you get the words and you're like, you know, and the words on that song, I was intrigued by, and Charles, are you the primary lyric writer? Yeah. He writes everything. <laughs> <laughs> he writes everything. So I was, I was curious what, you know, what was, can you give me the kind of the thought process behind that song? That track, Thousand? Um, yeah, it's it, it is one of those that came together rather fast of just I I think it weirdly enough the original riff came to me in goofing around with the keyboard and just like a really fuzzy low end section of just finding that tempo and really wanting to delve into a really slow paced thing mm -hmm. and then bringing it to guitar it just kind of took on more um, loud ebb and flow to it um lyrically though i think it's everything on the record is vaguely connected or rather it kind of connected itself here and there okay um i like to think that if leatherwings is the perspective of one afflicted with vampirism reflecting on their agelessness and watching those and the things that they love die Thousand Eyes is kind of a response to that in a um, as a victim on looking to someone uh, unknowable or uh, in an in inability to connect. Uh, and that was kind of where that comes from in a lot of ways. Um, it's weird, but a, a lot of my stuff comes from um, movies and uh Movies and comic books primarily, but something that kind of stuck with me, apart from the very obvious Yu-Gi-Oh reference, if you know, you know, um, was this this scene in the original Superman movie where Lois and him are flying, and that that sort of concept of the invocative of like the all-powerful being and the unknowing mortal kind of dichotomy was the a little bit in the wheelhouse there. Nice. Does that also get in because it's, uh, I think it's soaring high or high above is one of the more or less. Yeah. And I, I, there's probably a biblical reference in there too, but, um, I think primarily <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, the, the, um, the idea of, of looking upon something, um, that you can't quite, uh, can't quite comprehend. Yeah. yeah. So what, what was the motivation for each of you to to want to get into music and and play? Well, not so much. You know, there's a there's two kind of motivations. There's one to just to want to play an instrument, um, but there's another one to want to be in a band, because um, lots of people can play guitar, but they don't necessarily want to join a band, um, or they don't think about it. So, what was it for motivation for each of you to want to one play an instrument, but then also like take that further and say, I, I'd like to be in a band with other folks and, and make original music as opposed to doing covers because it's another thing you could do. Um, why don't we start with Torin? So, um, I've literally, like, 
my entire life, I have been a musician. Literally since before I could talk or walk, I was singing. Um, the story goes, um, as a, as a literal baby, um, I, um, like, uh, the Cranberries album, No Need to Argue, uh, was played around my house quite a lot when I was growing up. And so the very beginning of the album, uh, the song Ode to My Family, in the beginning, the do, 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 and so on. Like, I, like, I would sing that. <laughs> and, um, and very, uh, as, as additionally, as the story goes, apparently my mom told my pediatrician about that. And my pediatrician always wanted to see me sing. <laughs> and apparently I got gnarly stage fright and never sang for her, um, which is funny because now I don't get stage fright like at all. So, um, but as a baby, I was <laughs> mortified of singing in front of anyone except for like my mom. So, um, so just music has been a part of me my entire life. Um, and so then as for playing, playing in a band and playing original music, I, um, well, so as a teenager, I played covers exclusively. I'm not a songwriter. Um, I tried dabbling in songwriting a little bit here and there and just never never really felt comfortable with it and never felt terribly motivated about it. So I just never really did much. I'm sure I could learn if I wanted to, but, uh, yeah. so, um, and so I spent pretty much my entire, uh, adolescence, uh, just playing covers. And I, I like, I didn't really have musical tastes that lined up with a lot of my friends. So yeah. I didn't really have other people to play with. So I would, um, I would just take my guitar and just go out busking and play covers. And that was really, that was how I performed as a teenager. And I just kind of got sick of that. I just wanted, I, cause I always wanted to play original music. Um, and just like I said, just didn't really care enough about writing it myself to do it. So, um, so I just, yeah, I just always wanted to play in a band so that I could, uh, so that I could just create something new and listen back on that and be like, I helped like bring this song into existence in a yeah. form that people can hear. Um and so so and so that just ended up being just being the best way for me to do that because for whatever reason drummers are fairly different to come and I've never ever played with a band their host. So I've always played what you need. And they're like, yeah, we need her. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to change the pace this time either. <laughs> it, it, it is hard yeah. to find good drummers. Although, although, to be fair, in this band, everybody but me is To be fair, in this band, I do get to change the pace. Sometimes I, <laughs> yes, Dan's the only non drummer in the band. <laughs> um, but uh, but in this in this band, I do get to get a change of pace because I sometimes I get to play band live, very very occasionally accordion as well. But oh, cool. drums is like I said, usually what's called for. So that's where I'm at. Cool, uh, Dan. How about you? Um, I think like touring, I just it's kind of always been a part of my life and upbringing. Um, I was raised on Elvis Presley quite a bit. Nice. So my, my dad's a fanatic. Um, <laughs> but um, my mom always did a lot of singing. I remember driving around and just singing along all the songs uh, as a young kid. So I kind of got swayed by the uh, <laughs> that that rock star um, lifestyle of like, oh, I want to do that. Like, I want yeah. that. that. <laughs> I, I always wanted to sing. Um I wrote my first song when I was 10. Um, but like, I didn't play music. I could just sing. So like, I had no idea really what I was doing. Like I got my first guitar at 11 and I didn't play it till I was uh, probably like 14 or something like that. Like oh, I just uh, kind of fiddled, but I really never, yeah. never learned. I didn't, you know, um, no one around me played. So I, I couldn't really learn from anybody. Um, and then I moved up to, uh, 
the kind of the pseudo country area and uh met, met a bunch of musicians and um you know there's there's not much to do up here so um you know we, we were all metal heads so we we all kind of like always talked about forming a band and none of us ever actually did we all had band names and all this stuff and <laughs> so it's, it's kind of always been the fantasy for the longest time and then i got my first bass from a cousin and i just started playing it and i didn't i mean i didn't join a band till no I, I started a band late high school but we never played out we never played shows we i think we wrote maybe five songs but we, i never found a drummer and now again i'm playing three of them <laughs> so, but, um, <laughs> um, but like eventually uh meeting charles through through a local community theater um he, he definitely gave me the opportunity to uh fully be in a band like i really didn't start playing out till i met charles and i was i think in my 20s by then so uh, it, it had been a fantasy mostly for the longest time and then uh finally getting to do it and, and realizing it's not very glamorous <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, it's jarring but also very humbling you know yeah um but yeah it, it's just always been something I, I i thought about doing and fantasized about doing and now i get to do it that's cool that's awesome uh joe how about you yeah i mean so as far as me just getting into music in general i don't know if um if um y'all so, so I'm, I'm assuming most everybody here is like local to michigan um, we grew up with uh, smooth jazz V98.7. It used to be a, <laughs> used to be a jazz station. So my mom was a DJ there for the longest time. Oh, really? Awesome. Was, what? Yeah, grew, <laughs> yeah. All sorts of wonderful new information this week. <laughs> um, the... <laughs> Come on. The... You don't know. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I was one, two, three years old. She was, she was working and she would bring me to work. So I'd just be running around this radio station with smooth jazz and kenny g and tim Baldwin playing and like that was amazing my, <laughs> yeah my first ex yeah and, and uh i mean there was um there was that i mean there was a, a piano sitting in my living room as early as i was like four years old so i was just like i was honestly just kind of fucking around on that and then you know my mom's like okay we're gonna get you left so <laughs> I, I started i started taking piano when i was piano lessons when I was nine and then that sort of evolved into um being able to play bass guitar and then as Dan alluded to a, a drum eventually um and so so yeah I, I I've been playing music you know I mean seriously since I was nine years old I'm 25 now so that's wow that, that's 16 years yeah um of, of some kind of music um but it would, being in a band specifically um honestly it's like I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. I feel like the, the rock star fantasy that Dan mentioned earlier, that sort of came like a little later. Uh, I think it just, it, it sort of started with like, it was just some buddies in my, uh, from high school. I'm, I, I'm in another band. It, we're, we're still around. We're still doing stuff. It's, it's, it's me and my high school buddies. Um, and I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, we, we all just kind of like music and we just, we just kind of like playing together. So it's, yeah. it's uh, I don't know. It, it, it's it's a way for if you're in a band with somebody you're you're you just you know that person on a different level than maybe somebody else, but, right you know not necessarily deeper but just like you just know them in a different you know, yeah that's, that's, for sure that's unique yeah de definitely you definitely get to um well you you kind of bond over the music and or um if you've got a good group of people they kind of give you different ideas, you know, things you hadn't thought about and different kinds of music that you may not have been exposed to. So I, I think that's definitely something that I've, I liked about being in the band. Um, Charles, how about you? What was your motivations? Well, I, I think some formative experiences for me um, was joining, well, I, I guess beyond that, I always liked reading stories, telling stories, making things up, um, and eventually joining um, a middle school band. All right. And I think the smoking gun incident was probably uh, when we were doing tryouts for what instruments we would be good at. Um, I had it in my head I would play like saxophone <laughs> or something because I'm like, that's cool. That's a cool one. Um, and when I go to the teacher, they're like, yeah, your mom called, you have, uh, asthma, so you can't do a wind instrument. So go play drums. 
So then they throw me in the back with all the percussion kids. Um, and uh, that was probably the, the smoking gun of why what set me on the path to not only start playing drums, joining marching band throughout high school, um, and all the while uh, goofing around with, with guitars and realizing you need to have some foundations with drums and going back and forth. My first high school band, I was just going to be the drummer. Um, and then we had our first practice and the singer didn't show up. So uh, they were like, can anyone kind of sing? And at the time I had been in theater, I believe. So there, I was like, eh. So uh, I was the singing drummer and that transitioned to, um, you know, the infatuation with, with writing more and more. And that was more or less the transitional period from playing drums and singing to learning how to play guitar and singing and then um, doing it all by yourself until you could find people to help support whatever that is. Um, <laughs> but by, by and large, uh, I think the, the biggest thing for me is I want to, you know, tell stories and create things and create a world to kind of expand uh, what we can, what we can talk about, what we can perceive. And then life in general inspires. So um, a lot of stuff, but still trying to figure that out <laughs> so you mentioned real quick, uh, oh go ahead yeah real quick i think it's interesting that um you were told because you couldn't play the sax because of your asthma that there was a kid that i went to elementary and middle school with who in middle school he started playing the sax and he had he had asthma too so like as was obviously not inherently a disqualifier i don't know if his asthma is as bad as yours but like i'm sure it's yeah. not I'm sure it's not, but like, uh, but but, also, yeah, in, in my, in my particular case at the time. The yeah. Well, yeah, really, you know, and actually we do our best. Uh, you, you bring up a, a good point, Torin, because I, I think, you know, and I could just be making shit up, but um, I could have swore that I had read somewhere that actually, you know, exercising your lungs, the, the, the type of deep breathing you would have to do to play a wind in instrument is actually good for you. You know, it's in terms of, you know, asthma. And obviously, you it doesn't bother you too much today, Charles, because you can sing and do a good job with that. So, I mean, he does oh, like hit the inhaler when, he, when he's on gets yeah. off stage. <laughs> I, I have, it's, I have it's learned, on stage with <laughs> I have learned to live and uh, figure out how to, how to, how to work with it. Nice. Yeah. And like, and um, when we, when we record, like when we go get down to like recording vocal parts, Charles always comes in extra prepared because he knows he needs to knock out each part in like one, maybe two takes. And he does. <laughs> like yeah, but, what you would hear was... on record, it's rare for us to do more than a couple vocal takes. I, I mean the the whole drive to uh to recording the album, there was a point Charles and I didn't talk because he was just doing breathing exercises. And that's an hour drive. <laughs> it was a very quiet drive that he's just blowing in a straw ah. just to make sure that he can he can do it. <laughs> just a whole hour of <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Sometimes it just you gotta you gotta get your warm ups in. That's yeah. right. That's All right. you listeners at home. That's right. <laughs> so uh I always like to kind of do like a um uh, retrospective as far as you know albums that have been uh, influential to you so what was the very first album you bought with your own money uh dan <laughs> since you're laughing oh it's <laughs> it's 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 one it dates myself and two um it's just ridiculous the first thing i ever bought with my own money music wise was uh, a cassette tape of the Baja Men uh, who let the dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Excellent. amazing. Excellent. That was one of my favorite records as a kid. That's fantastic. Uh, Charles, how about you? Um, I think I can say, for the record, um, it was a compilation of horror movie soundtracks. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> Best up. Nice. Do you remember? Do you uh, do you remember which uh, horror movie soundtracks were on there? 
Yeah, it it was an it wasn't like the official versions, so it was like slightly demented version, like like made for public broadcasting versions of like the Nightmare on Elm Street, the um, two Bueller Bells of Exorcist, uh, first the Hitchcock stuff. Yeah, um, and this was all just variation of that, and I I had a, a deep appreciation for that at the time because that was like this is this is what i need this is music i'll yeah. need this yeah oh, um yeah. <laughs> then it, yeah uh joe how about you i had to dig a little bit for this and the answer surprised me it was a i was how old was i i was like maybe eight or nine years old it was a cd copy of um uh, Michael Jackson's number one. It was, oh, it was, right. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 weird because it's like I, I I was really into Michael Jackson growing up, and not that I don't like his music now, but just yeah. like compared to everything that I listen to now, it's just so different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Torrin, how about you? Yeah, I had to I had to scroll. I like, stepped off screen because <laughs> I was scrolling through my iTunes library to see. Um, so. So I grew up like listening to like until I was like 18 or 19 just listening to what it was a music library that was honestly probably mostly pirated stuff <laughs> like, like, my family all pirated yeah. I didn't do any illegal downloading <laughs> myself yeah. um but um I think the first album I ever bought myself was an album I already had in the pirated music library but probably the second modest mouse album lonesome crowded ones nice because i absolutely love early modest mouse like i could listen to their first three albums forever and <laughs> never get sick of it awesome <laughs> that's excellent so do you guys have any um you know if if uh, the picassos could play anywhere in the world um where would you want to play, each of you? And um, would there be any bands you'd like to have on the bill with you? Uh, let's start with uh, Charles. That's a good one. Um, hmm. I guess I don't know any like particular like venues that are the dream right now, but I, I would just love to play like in a historical setting, maybe, I mean, everyone's going to guess, um, Dracula's Castle, <laughs> in Mania, perhaps. Yeah. You could probably set up a show there in the, yeah. in the Great Hall or something. Wouldn't that be, see, that, that, that to me would feel, would feel like we've really done something. That would be awesome. Um, <laughs> as far as any bands, uh, really, uh, yeah. If if there's a locals on the uh, in the in the area, maybe we'd we'd search out for some some support. That who knows? Yeah, cool. That would be cool. Some Transylvanian rock. Uh, Joe, how about you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah. You're thinking big, Charles. I, I was thinking like, oh, the Masonic Temple might be cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, Masonic, Masonic. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, but like you know, uh, the Masonic te uh, Masonic Temple in Detroit would be fun. Um, you know, regardless of whether this band or some of the, any of my other bands that I play with, I think the Fillmore would be just just be a lot of fun to play. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just uh, would love to tap into the some dudes whenever possible. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Any bands you'd like to play with? Uh I don't have a good answer for that. I, I, um, the thing is, it's like I, as far as like our niche and our genre of whatever you want to call it, goth rock, you know, cemetery mm -hmm. punk, you know, whatever else, it's it, this kind of a brief rabbit trail. It's like this is not a genre that like I actively sought out initially. It was very much a situation where it was like I was in a band with Torrent, um, and by happenstance, he was like, hey, we're kind of looking for a keyboardist. You know, do you want to jump on board? And I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'll give it a try. And of course, I end up, you know, really digging it, really digging the sound. Um, so, but that said, I, I, I'm still kind of learning what some of the, some of the 
me personally. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Like what other other bands would kind of fit? Yeah. Yeah. What would be like the the big names? Yeah, that that would fit our fit our niche. Yeah. Well, sometimes what I think is fun is when you have a show that where the bands have they're not like wildly different, but it's different, you know. So you have like you guys, and then I don't know, you throw in. uh, maybe some like a, an actual bluegrass band, you know, so like yeah. Wilson Thicket or something. I mean, they're local, but, you know, throw in some mix like that. And then maybe throw in, I don't know, uh, an R&B band just to kind of give you a little change. So you'd have that those do make for, for interesting shows. And we have played shows like that where it's, yeah. it's us and the, you know, something that's definitely more, you know, 2000s pop punk sort of yeah. style and yeah. you know it, it, it's fun it's like yeah. you meet a lot of cool people like that yeah you know, for sure a lot of cool bands. uh torin how about you yeah as far as where we play i don't really care like <laughs> as long as there's as long as there's people there that's like as long as there's people there to enjoy us and as long as there's other cool bands like on the bill or other cool musicians whether they're bands or solo artists or whatever Right. Um, and I guess I have two answers for who I'd like to play with. One of them is obvious. I mentioned Modest Mouse and how much I absolutely love them. <laughs> Being able to like open for them would be a dream come true. And actually, kind of ironically, the first my first gig with my first band was at a venue that Modest Mouse had played at like a couple weeks before. Um, needless to say, we had a much smaller audience than they did, <laughs> but um. Uh, but then the other band I'd like to play with is actually a band I'd like to play with again because we actually did play with Amigo the Devil, like very sure. like one of our first gigs together after Dan and I came into the picture cool. um, was opening for Amigo the Devil and Harley Poe. And this was like right as Amigo was really starting to to gain traction. So um, he was a really, really nice guy. And which is really funny when you listen to like you listen to his music and he sings about like some really really like (laughs) really grim stuff (laughs) um and but he was just the friendliest guy like like i was the first the first one of us to get there i was like off over in the corner like tuning up my drums and he comes over to me and he's like hey i'm danny and i'm like Hey, I'm Torin. I had no idea who he was. Didn't know he was one of the headlining right. acts. But he was just the nicest guy. That's um, awesome. He gave me free copies of his CDs too. Like that's so cool. like, his, his aura was very like, comforting. That's cool. I'm sorry, that's was that Dan? Cool. I said his aura was very comforting. Like, like yeah. he just he felt like he would give a really good hug. He he did. He hugged me actually. It was really nice. <laughs> I don't want to say if he hugged me or not. I can't remember. I feel like he did. I was like, oh, wow, I feel really safe right now. That's awesome. That's <laughs> Which awesome. is why I think he can get away with the music that he, he, fe- he <laughs> feels <laughs> safe. He can join us to Dracula's Castle. Right. <laughs> 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 That's uh, the ideal. Uh, so, Dan, how about you? Um, I, I think I agree with Torin. Um, I, I'm game to play absolutely everywhere. Um, but locally speaking, I, I've always wanted to... <laughs> play St. Andrew's Hall. Oh, yeah. um, I have cool seen some, my, some of my favorite bands on that stage, so it would just be really cool. We're to... working on it. Nice. Eventually. Like, I, I feel like if, if that was the farthest I made it, I would be very satisfied with my career. Uh, I hope it doesn't end there. But um, but as for, as for bands we, we I would like to play with, um, I think uh, Murder by Death would be a very fun show to be a part of. Um, the uh and again i was even going to say amigo and Harley poe as well like just it was a good time a great show the thought the the crowd was really cool awesome um yeah it was it was it was, it was a great show for a great great group of people i didn't really get to talk to harley poe but um i was i've been a fan for a couple of years so it was really cool to, to get to play with them anyways yeah yeah that's awesome Most um good. So, uh, so, so, what's next to, uh, for you guys? What do you have coming up? Um, so, just so you know, the podcast will come out next Wednesday. So, uh, oh. don't tell me about a show this weekend because it'll be passed. It'll be well, <laughs> well, good that timing because we have week. a show the following weekend. Yeah. All yes, right. We, uh, uh, we got four twenty at uh, Smalls and Hamtramck. 
Awesome. Where we will be supporting Tim Barry and Fish Guts. Excellent. That should be a yeah. fun show. So Charles and I saw Tim Barry back, I think, 2019 ish, uh, with Against supporting Me. And, against Me, no. Like, yeah. Yeah. That that should be a really fun show. Uh, I'm not super familiar with Fish Guts, though. So uh, I don't know. Uh, any other shows beyond that? Um, I know we have some stuff in May coming up. Um, we've got May 10th. I believe it's at Corktown Tavern with Pancho Villa Skull, Headless Mary. Uh, and then we do have, um, May 26th or 25th. Yeah. I think uh, 25th. Whatever that Saturday of that weekend is. At 25th. Um, at the historic Masonic Temple of Bay City, not the one you're thinking, <laughs> but nevertheless, still a historic Masonic temple. Um, and we're playing with Vasm or Crypt. It's oh, like nice. a little dark, spooky, goth fest night. So we're very excited to head back out that way and with our good friends Vasm, who um, they were just in Europe. If anyone saw that, they played all over. Oh, really? Wow. I, yeah, it's wild. It's been, uh, was it last year? Last year at Cork, Corktown, I think, is when I saw them. So it's been a, a year at least. But yeah, they're great. So that, yeah, that'll be an awesome show. Fantastic. Yeah, they're always fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, I want to thank you so much for being on Fans with Bands. I've uh, really enjoyed talking with you. And I've just got one last question for each of you. And that is pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? Joe. Oh shit. <laughs> uh I'm a pineapple guy. I love All pineapple. right. Great. All right. <laughs> Tora, how about you? Um, I have stomach issues and I can't eat pineapple or pizza. Oh, damn. <laughs> mm -mm. It's so, fun. Oh man. I'm I feel for you, man. That's a bummer. <laughs> uh Dan, how about you? Um, I am I'm a no pineapple guy, but I'm also just a pepperoni and cheese kind of guy. Oh, yeah. um, but I won't judge you for putting pineapple on pizza. <laughs> do do whatever you want to do with your life. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, Charles, how about you? Oh oh, I I will take that pineapple. All uh, right. <laughs> my 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 secret um, secret order would be pineapple feta with um, red pepper, and oh. that's kind of to me the perfect. Perfect combination, but yeah. Now, see, I've I've heard pineapple with you know ham. Obviously, that's the classic one. Pineapple and jalapeno, but I've never heard feta. That that's intriguing, right there. Very nice. <laughs> Whatever pizza chain wants to make that specialty, I mean, yeah, by all means, yeah. <laughs> and they could call it the Picasso. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You'd never, you'd never think. <laughs> Uh, well, guys, thanks again for being on Fans with Bands. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having it. us. All right. And thank you. Yeah. Take care, guys. Uh, hope you don't catch a show. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you out. Just uh, keep us posted. Yep. All right. Cool. Many thanks to Charles, Dan, Torn, and Joe of the Picassos, along with their fans, Abby and Lauren, for joining me on this episode of Fans with Bands. I've not listened to a lot of goth, but I was very much drawn in by the Picasso's music that is unlike anything I've ever heard and is extremely fascinating. It was a treat to spend some time with the band and hear their stories. I also want to thank them profusely and apologize to everyone for the rude interruption by some spam Zoomer shippered. Happily, we all seem to recover from the interruption. You can catch the Picassos live on April 20th at Smalls in Hamtramck and on May 25th at the historic Masonic Temple in Bay City. Be sure to pick up their album, Divination Scars, Among the Dead in Symmetry. Stay tuned to their website and socials for more information. See the show notes for all the details and links. Bands are nothing without you, the fans. Purchasing music and merchandise is critical to their survival. If you can help out your favorite bands, please do. 
If you're in Michigan, consider following the Playing in Detroit area tonight and SE for Southeast Michigan Music Facebook pages. They are fantastic places for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by rating the show, telling your friends, telling your neighbors, telling your family, telling your priest, tell everyone, and leave a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jam.